Hey, welcome guys. In this video, I'm doing a review of the Samsung 30 inch smart fridge powered by Samsung Smart Hub. My particular model is the RF265BAESR, which is a crazy tongue twister mouthful. Now, this entire review covers my particular model, and the fridge portion accommodates 16.2 cubic feet, whereas the freezer has 8 point cubic feet. The right refrigerator door has an amazingly clear and responsive 21.5 inch touchscreen, which we'll get into later on. But my model fridge also comes in a darker color option. The top fridge portion is a French door style and thankfully unlike some bad design fridges, you don't have to open the right door to open the left one to open. Now some of the shelves in the doors are height adjustable. Now moving inside the fridge, the top left side, the shelf, can be adjusted at a vertical angle for taller items to be placed inside. A similar option is available at the middle right shelf as well. Now the drawers don't feel like they'll break, but are a bit flimsy and loose as they don't seem to slide against a proper rail. This isn't a huge issue, but something to keep in mind. In between them is where the water filter is residing, and just below is the pantry, which has its own dedicated temperature control. This temperature control is done manually within the fridge, not through the software interface. And not to forget the ice maker, it's sitting on the top left of the inside of the fridge. One of the smart features available is if the fridge door or freezer is open for too long, it'll start to beep and alert you on your phone if it's synced with Samsung SmartThings or Family Hub app and on the fridge itself. On the front left door is a dispenser for water, cubed ice, and crushed ice. Now switching over to the bottom, the freezer handle is toddler proof as I can attest to my one year old failing to open it since the handle has to be lifted up and pulled to open. Inside the freezer, there's a top drawer for storage, which can slide back to access the lower level storage. So according to the Canadian Energy Guide, this fridge consumes about 720 kilowatts of power a year, which is estimated to be $86 a year Canadian. Over on the bottom of the screen, we have controls for a multitasking application button, a home button, just like Android, and a back button, again, just like Android. So I do know that the camera's a little bit far away, but that's because the screen is in portrait mode, whereas the camera records in widescreen mode, so there's nothing I can really do about that. But I just wanna give you a very general overview of the interface. So it looks very similar to Android. You have widgets, you have app shortcuts, you have different screens to drag things around on and play with. So I'm not gonna get into every little thing because some of it's very generic stuff. For example, you have the time, weather, which is pretty accurate. You have a calendar, which me and my wife find fantastic. We can put both of our uh, calendars in here, both of our accounts, and we can see who's running late for what, you know, what's going on with their schedule. The view inside is one of the unique features to the Samsung Family Hub uh, smart fridges. So you can actually view in literally inside the fridge and it kind of has a history indicator down here. So you can go back and see what it was like. Um, you can actually tap on something. So for example, right in the corner, I see eggs and I can add it to the shopping list. Maybe when I order more or can add it to the food list, which I'll show you right now. The food list is basically a list of all the foods in your fridge. This stuff is added manually or as you check items off the shopping list, it'll just get thrown in here automatically and try to predict when does the food expire. But you can always customize it just by tapping on a, an item and modify is it in the fridge, freezer, pantry, and when is it set to expire. And the expiry dates display here. Um, you'll see that I have some ham slices expiring in two days, beans expiring in two days, and so on and so forth. It goes up to three days, two days, one days, and the day of. That's when it gives you the warning up here. There is a gallery. So for example, if you go to apps, this is where all the apps are listed. These apps that you'll get are dependent on where you live. And there's no like, app store of any kind. Whatever you get, that's all you have. So going to gallery from here, every app you open always gives the option, do you want to add an app shortcut to the desktop? And if there are widgets available, then you can add those instead. But let's just open it for now. So one of the annoying things was getting rid of the stock pictures and uploading mine. Um, what I had to do is actually download the Family Hub app for my Android phone and then upload the photos from there. But you can only upload 10 photos at a time. And I noticed it takes about an hour and a half for it to sync across Samsung system before they appear here. But when they are here, you can activate like a slideshow. We tend to turn on the slideshow when people come over for dinner all the time. It's just nice to have it in the background. The fridge temperature controls it was really annoying to find because I was looking literally in the fridge where it usually is. It's actually all software based. So you can see the temperature outside, which is in the kitchen. Is the ice maker full or not? Uh, when is the water filter due to be changed? Right now it's clean. It will give you a warning when it's due to be changed. You can adjust the temperature of the fridge, the freezer, there's fridge settings, change the units from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and just other basic settings like energy saving. There are there's some random gimmicky things, for example, uh, the whiteboard, where you can literally just draw an item, you can add some emojis, 
can add pictures, you can add voice recordings to this memo. So I'll continue with the apps in just a second, but there's a couple of items of concern. First and foremost, um, you'll notice that here we you just swipe from the top and you get the settings. The annoying thing here that I'm trying to point out is that they don't tell you how much storage space is available in the fridge. So I have no idea how many pictures I can upload. I don't know if I can upload 30, 100, or 1,000. I don't know what the limitation is here. The other annoying thing, and this is the most critical to me, is that the only way I can find to open apps is through this app shortcut here, and then I get everything. For the life of me, I can't do it any other way. I can't go to the system settings menu. I long press the multitasker button, the home button, back button. I can get the apps to show up, even if I swipe from the sides of the screen. It has to be this. But the, the problem is, if I hold it and long press, you can remove widgets and app shortcuts and to the trash. I don't want to test this out because I spent too much time setting up the fridge, but what happens if I let go of the apps icon there? Will it disappear from the home screen? Will I lose the ability to access apps forever until I do a factory reset of the software? This seems like a really huge oversight on Samsung, something so simple and crucial. Let's go over to shopping list, and I want to show you how this integrates with the smart recipes app, the food list app. Um, they all kind of sync together. It's really awesome. So you can see that there's some items checked off on the grocery list because my wife did grocery shopping recently. These are the items she automatically checked off as she's going through the grocery store and they got added to the food list. Um, so whatever items I add on the fridge will sync to the Family Hub app on my phone and my wife's phone because our accounts are linked, our Samsung accounts. So if I were to update it on my phone, it'll sync to her phone in the fridge. It, it, it's all a kind of unison. It all syncs together. It's really awesome. That smart recipe app I was talking about. Um, let's go over the recipe apps. There are a few. For example, All Recipes is a fantastic website, but the app is not a really an app. It just goes to their website and it's horribly laggy. It's terrible. Tasty is actually not bad. Um, it has a lot of recipes, a lot of steps you can follow in with writing and text. Smart Recipes is the app of my choice. Uh, the reason being is because this is, I think, a Samsung developed app. Uh, for example, if you go to Chicken Marinated with Basil and Lemon, you have the calorie count, ingredients. I wish it showed you the protein, uh, the iron and fiber, the rest of the nutrition value. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but it's not a big deal. But the reason I like this is because as you go through the ingredients list, you can start checking items off. And there's a button to send to your shopping list if you don't have it in your kitchen somewhere. I find that to be very convenient. And it also links to Meal Planner, which is like a daily planner of what food you're going to eat. There is also Cook Mode which basically starts dictating what's on the screen. You can set a timer to each step that's being broadcasted. You can just turn that off. You can manually go through it if you want. So there is a built-in AI in here. It's, uh, I'll just demonstrate for you guys. What's 27 times 33? Hmm. We don't have any timers running at the moment. So as you can see, it, it knew it was going to multiply. But it's too stupid to do it. I, I find that to me almost useless. I wish I had Google Assistant in here. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Of course, you have a to-do list item here. So here you have me. Uh, there's some items of mine, but you can expand it and view the full list. And of course, my wife's account is integrated. She can add hers here if she wanted to. Um, there is also Ring compatibility. So for example, I have a Ring Pro doorbell, which I have reviewed. I'll put a link to it in the video description. It's a really awesome item. It's good and a bad to it. So if I hit Live View, it always prompts that the device is offline, which is not the case. If I type live view again right away, it works just fine. Um, that's pretty annoying, but what I notice is that when someone does ring the doorbell, this comes up 100% of the time. So when, when I actually need to see the door, then it actually works. Uh, my wife and I have tested the intercom. It works just fine. It works great, very clear, uh, easy to listen to. So a lot of these apps aren't crucial to go through. We can pause it here and just kind of look at the apps listing. For example, you can call an Uber from the fridge, which is pretty neat. So I'm going to go over to the web browser and give you a quick demo of what we can and can't do. So I'm on the Netflix website through the browser, which is pretty awesome. Now, if I were to open something like BoJack Horseman, and I just hit play next to episode, it says I have an error. You can't play Netflix on the fridge through the browser. So as you guys can see, I'm playing a YouTube video from my YouTube channel on the fridge through the browser. It's not the clearest video for some reason. Um, I'm not sure if the processing power just can't handle uh, beyond 1080p because it's it's not the sharpest video, even though the screen clarity of, of everything else, like looking at pictures, is amazingly crisp and clear. And yes, you do have speaker controls uh, and brightness adjustments from here, as you can see. So let's just do a volume demo really quick. Instructions, which is drivers. So you end up trying to cut with a spoon, for example, which wouldn't really work too well. Or even worse, you would try to eat cereal with a knife. 
So in that sound sample, the camera is about three feet away, so it's more than enough to project throughout your kitchen. So you do have the ability to mirror your Samsung Smart TV here if it is compatible, or say an Android device, again, if it's compatible, I have the Galaxy S8 using SmartView. So I open this up here, and I have to open it up on my cell phone as well. And as you can see, I am mirroring my smartphone right now. Uh, the responsiveness is, is incredibly fast. Make sure you do have good Wi-Fi in order to get this done. But as you can see, I'm even opening up the camera app on my cell phone, and it works incredibly quickly. So you guys can't see it because I blurred it out on purpose due to YouTube copyright. Um, they are able to scan what's being displayed in my YouTube videos. But I'm actually mirroring Netflix right now f using SmartView from my phone to the fridge. And the audio projects to the fridge. It doesn't actually broadcast from my phone. So this is actually the workaround method to get Netflix to work here. An annoying thing I want to point out is that whenever there's a software update available, it'll just keep the screen on indefinitely. So for example, I had a software update that I kept denying because... As someone who works with a lot of IT equipment, you should know to never do a software update on day one in case it messes up the product. But what happened every day at an ungodly hour is that the screen would turn on and notify that there's an update available. And this would keep the screen on until they woke up in the morning and then just dismiss the alert. Which is kind of annoying because I'm not sure if this would cause a burn-in in the screen, but it's also consuming quite a bit of electricity. So I just wanted to give you a very quick recap of the Family Hub app. It's quite similar to what you see on the fridge and I demonstrated. So the apps listed at the top are Samsung built-in services. They don't include any third-party services, of course. And you have previews uh, like your calendar, memo, to-do list, shopping list, and what's inside your fridge. So if I were to tap this, just as an example to give you guys a quick preview, you can see your fridge from anywhere in the world, which is always nice, right? As you can see, I'm on mobile data, just to prove that point. And of course, you have the same features. If I were to tap on yogurt here, for example, same features. I can add it to your shopping list or my food list if I want to. And I can go over here and see the actual food list and what's expired. As someone who's adding devices to my smart home environment, this is a great addition. Now, the software does have some annoyances that I pointed out earlier and you guys will see here listed as well. And the Family Hub app for Android at the very least could use a bit of a refresher. Overall, I'm very pleased with this fridge and my wife was kind of annoyed to see more smart home technology, especially in an appliance, but she's actually starting to get used to it and she uses it quite often. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.